What a job Pat Fitzgerald's doing at Northwestern. You say, Mark, they just went 3-9 and nine last year. He can't be doing that good of a job. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Power Five. We are looking at every schedule, and this is our preview plus our record projection. Not our final prediction, our record projection in the spring. We're looking at Northwestern right now, a team that went 3-9, and nine, had one of the worst offenses in college football by any measure. It was painful to watch them play offensive football last year. It was painful for them to try to squeeze out a first down. Passes in the flat for four-yard gains were, were monumental for this offense last year. Hunter Johnson, the five-star quarterback, transfer from Clemson, was not the answer, at least last year. The offensive line was deplorable, and the skill position players, never dynamic, were not even efficient last year, and the running game fell apart as well. Three and nine. And yes, I will stand by my opening statement of Pat Fitzgerald doing an outstanding job at Northwestern. We know the deal. They cannot stay competitive every year. There is going to be a downward trend in the cycle, and they hit it last year in a big way at 3-9. and nine. Hit it a few years ago at 5-7, and seven. but in between, every three or four out of five years, they are competing for a division championship. They are going to decent bowl games. They are winning eight and nine games, as they did in 2018, going to the Big Ten championship game and defeating a nice Utah team in the, uh, the bowl game. So... Northwestern, do they become one of these teams that I've talked about in recent days on my call-in shows that is one of the one-third of the country in FBS football, in Power 5 football, that either increases by three wins or decreases by at least three wins every year? It was Northwestern last year. They went from 8-4 and four in the regular season in 2018 to 3-9. and nine. Do they bounce back? Let's look at the schedule. You see the W's, the L's, and the T's? The W's are almost, almost, there's no such thing, but almost guaranteed wins. The loss is the same on the flip side, although those would be less so for Northwestern, I think, the guaranteed, guaranteed losses, uh, because like they've got a shot at Iowa, but they've got about a 10% shot. Anything that is a reasonable shot at a win or a loss, where either side has a reasonable shot. Reasonable reason to believe that they should win the game. I gave that a toss-up. It's not a 50-50 toss-up necessarily. Just a reasonable chance of winning the game. Let's go through the Wildcats schedule with a rare Big Ten opener. We've mentioned this in the other videos. Please check out the other videos. We are making our way through the Big Ten. So check out the videos. Leave us your record projection and your thoughts on every team as well. Rare a Big Ten conference opener at Michigan State, but the Big Ten doing this more this season. We've seen it with uh, several other schools opening in conference. At Michigan State, it's a toss-up. Mel Tucker taking over at Michigan State. Sparty not what they've been under Mark D'Antonio during the front half of his tenure. The non-conference play for Northwestern, I tend to take it easy on Northwestern, and I shouldn't, because this non-conference schedule is... Awful, deplorable, embarrassing. It's a shame. They should be ashamed of this non-conference scheduling. Northwestern scheduled Stanford last year. They've had Stanford home and home in recent years. They've had Notre Dame on the schedule. Duke is a good play for Northwestern as a like team in the ACC. Uh, they've taken on some other teams uh, like that in, in the last 10 or 15 years. Vanderbilt, for example. Uh, those are the kind of teams that they probably should be playing. At least one power five. Tulane, Central Michigan. What is this? In November, Morgan State. Awful. Uh, Tulane's actually a winnable game for the Green Wave. The Green Wave could go to uh, Ryan Field and win that game. Tulane is one of the mid-tier teams in the American Conference. Uh, Northwestern should win the game, but man, they, they lost to recently a number. They've lost to teams in the MAC, even in winning the Western Division two years ago, lost to Akron. Uh, so they lose to MAC teams on a fairly regular basis, probably about 25% of the time. 
and two other non-Power 5 teams. So Tulane, don't look past that one. Central Michigan, likewise. But especially the Tulane game. Uh, the first three games in the Big Ten are going to be difficult. On the road at Michigan State, then they die back in the Big Ten play against Penn State on the road. And of course, if you follow my schedule breakdowns, it is very meaningful and significant who you play in the other division. I have broken down Big Ten schedules in the past where it has been a decided advantage or disadvantage for a particular team in who they play in the other division, especially for the Western Division teams that have to play the three games versus Eastern Division teams. Are you playing Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, or are you playing some combination of Indiana, Maryland, and Rutgers, for example? Well, for Northwestern, they've got the date at Michigan State. They've got Penn State, one of the powers out of the East, and they've got Maryland as well. So not too heavy. There's no Michigan, Ohio State there, but they do travel to Happy Valley. They follow up with Nebraska. That's been one of the more entertaining series under the radar. Northwestern and Nebraska have played just some thrilling games in recent years. Toss-up at home. Maryland, toss-up at home. Going to Iowa and Purdue is going to be mighty difficult. Uh, I will give the uh, game against Purdue a toss-up. And even the Iowa game, it's not a sure fire loss. But they're most likely going to lose that game. It's a double-digit underdog against the Hawkeyes on the road. Uh, Wisconsin at home. That's a team Northwestern has had some success against, even though Wisconsin has been the best program in the Western Division since it was founded. Again, the give-me win against Morgan State, going on the road to Minnesota and Illinois to finish up against the rival Illini. That's a toss-up game. Northwestern needs to win all three non-conference games because winning in the Big Ten is going to be difficult for this team, although they should be much better than they were this past season. Uh, let's say they beat Maryland and Illinois. They've got to find another win in there. They've got to find another win in there to become bowl eligible if they win all three non-conference games. So 3-0 in the non-conference is not guaranteed especially with Tulane there, but let's say they get it accomplished. They've got to win three games in the Big Ten to reach a bowl game. And those are most likely going to come against Maryland and Illinois, most likely. And then where's the other win? Probably would have to be against Purdue and maybe Nebraska at home. Uh, the Huskers have been deplorable on the road under Scott Frost. Coming off 3-9, and nine, I've got Northwestern improving to 6-6, six and six, barely 3-6 and six in the Big Ten. That is the projection right now for Northwestern football. Please like, comment down below with your record projection, share the videos out on the social media, and we will see you very soon with more Big Ten Western Division previews.